Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If you're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be diving into the energy of the week ahead. It is July 29th that it is that I'm filming at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Not that it really matters, but we did get a late start to the reading today because we had some very intense thunderstorms that we started the morning off with, but I'm here for it because it's really cooled down the energy or really cooled down the temperature of the day and the energy has been really high from that, in my opinion. It's been really nice. Very, um, like a little shot of cleansing espresso <laughs> into my Monday. How are you guys doing? How are you feeling? Is anybody here watching the Olympics? I have, we've, we actually have, um, some friends that we are rooting on and, um, you know, hoping for the best for them. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive right in. As you guys can see, we have some tarot cards that we are flipping. We're going to be merging the astrology chart. I have my laptop pulled over on the left, and then we're going to be working with the tarot cards here in the center. And then I also have some of my notes here. Of course, as a Virgo, I love to be prepared. So, before we lock into the week ahead, I want to talk to you about the energies that have already unfolded. Is that English? The energy that's already has presently unfolded that we've already experienced, right? The reason why we want to do this is because this is going to give us a clear look into the waters that we are currently treading. The first thing that is really standing out to me is the retrogrades. We have Pluto retrograde, we have Saturn retrograde, we have Neptune, Neptune retrograde, Chiron retrograde. Those are the major planets that impact our, the new, like, I don't wanna say the nuances of the day to day, but like it's bringing up a lot of issues, concerns, control, manipulation, power control, things in the government, things in our personal lives, intimate lives, our shadow selves, those are things that are gonna be reemerging. If you have been someone that has been feeling anxiety lately or tension, this is why you may feel like you're having a setback or you're, you're kind of finding yourself retracing your steps and things that you might have already lived through and gone through. I can speak personally that my phone, my text messages, my phone calls have been blowing up. I actually just got off the phone with one of my closest and they were having a panic attack about like something that they that, that they were dealing with. And I was listening, of course, but I'm like, it's so interesting that I'm about to record and you are kind of proving this energy, like showcasing this energy that I'm gonna be talking about this afternoon. Make sure that you watch this video especially, right, Pluto retrograde. Pluto is currently transiting through the sign of Aquarius. Um, we are gonna see this definitely when it comes to our government and politics and trying to reform like policy, like policy change. Another thing that we've been looking at is Saturn retrograde through Neptune, retracing its steps. This is uh, us learning how to reinforce our boundaries and to be the ones to, I don't say advocate for ourselves, but be responsible in what we need to do to take care of ourselves, mind, body, soul, spirit. It starts from within and then it bleeds out into the world, into our community and the globe as a whole right the other thing that we really want to look at is neptune retrograde especially now that neptune is in this kind of nice little sextile between pluto this is empowering us right especially as we're cutting cords and um any type of toxic bonds toxic relationships toxic mindsets or our, our patterns things that we have since moved away from that we've migrated from but we find ourselves kind of like a current it can kind of pull us back in this could be a relationship this could be patterns like how we think how we eat how we move in our day-to-day -day. if you're in a toxic situation in your work any type of pattern that it is that you know that you have been outgrowing or that spirit has been calling you to outgrow this is something that it, those themes kind of show up think about the the quote the saying that says health or healing isn't linear this is a, a prime example of 
when you're taking those steps forward, those positive steps forward, and you are making progress, right? You're feeling, you're feeling good. You're feeling like, okay, you know, it's working. Like I'm feeling better. I'm seeing, even if it doesn't feel comfortable and happy all the time and joyful and peaceful, or this, especially the sense of freedom that it is that so many of us are experiencing right now, especially as we're breaking free of past patterns. Um, it's still, it's still, we're still able to see the progress, right? When, when these planets go retrograde, we have to, it's easy to get comfortable. It's easy to get overconfident and we need to humble ourselves and remember that we're still human beings, that we're still trying, we're still living, we're still learning. We need to give ourselves a whole lot of grace. Now I want to, I do have some cards that are pulled out here, um, before I look into these cards, because they're really, really telling and they're really supporting the energy that is I'm seeing within the astrology charts, I want to talk about another energy from the past, Chiron retrograde, and the fact that Mercury is entering into the sign of Virgo or entered into the sign of, of Virgo July 25th. Chiron re- went retrograde July 26th. So basically with this, guys, we need to remember that the smaller things that we're doing, especially Virgo energy here, especially like where we put our mind, especially how we are processing information, what we're, th- what we're thinking, and even making lists, these little, um, the smaller steps, the healthier steps, as wholesome and as, I don't say as pure as possible, but as holistic and as whole as possible are going to make us feel better. For those of you guys, this is a a huge, well, for many of us, this is a huge opportunity for us to begin to focus on holistic healing, our diet, our lifestyle, our regimen. That is going to provide a whole lot of healing and balance, um, and it starts within the mind first, right? For those of you guys that um, have anxiety or tension or fear, this is about going for walks, getting out of your head and back into your body, right? That's huge. That's huge. That's huge. Um, also, be very careful discerning of um, relationships and friendships. Anything that is creating tension within you, it's not necessary. It's not needed for you to continue to carry this. This is not just going to be your energy. Also, keep in mind that we are on the under the umbrella of the stars other people are going to be feeling this energy as well so you may be coasting by you may be fine you may have balance you may be working on yourself in a in a good way in a positive way continuing to make healthy choices and decisions for some of you guys you may actually have been on vacation and coming back into your day-to-day work and you are applying like new habits and new routines especially when you took a step back and you assessed your life and you you your your what you're focusing on kind of changed a lot it's kind of show you what is important to you now or and you might be taking things that you've learned and applying them into your day-to-day that's that's something else that i hear here however do know that this sounds so rude but like you're not the only one here on this earth so there's going to be people around you especially past connections of all different kinds. It could be family, it could be friends, it could be past um, intimate connections and relationships. They are in a, a season and a period of reevaluation, em- kind of immersing themselves, and they're not actively trying to do it, but the universe is calling them to do it, kind of sinking themselves in the stew of their own karma, the stew of their own thoughts, their own feelings. That's going to be bubbling up, so don't be surprised if you hear of those people especially because next week we have the new moon that's going to be happening in the sign of leo very expressive but also opening doors that's going to be on the fourth but the fifth mercury is going to be officially retrograde in virgo and mercury just entered into the sign of virgo again this is going to be on the fifth but mercury just entered into the sign of virgo on july 25th so what this person has been stewing in you are most likely going to potentially hear about it, right? So they may text, they may call, they may reach out. You may hear gossip, word of mouth. There's so many different things that like an an email, hopefully it, it looks like it could be like organized, like they really put a lot of thought into this. I'm hoping that that's what, um, that's how this energy will come through. Be very careful of people who want to, 
I don't say use you, but they found like life without you has kind of proven to be difficult and uncomfortable. And now they're trying to re-emerge themselves back in and benefit from what you gave to them, whether it be a ear that was always available to listen to, a sense of humor and laughter or joy. Like it's that person that calls when they have no one else, you know, or they miss you. And it's like, well, what exactly is it that you miss? You, you got to be really, use your discernment. Your discernment is going to be very important here, 1000%. Spirit has been talking to us a lot about the power of our discernment, this gift that's given to us to ask for clarity, to know if something's, the energy is for us or if it's working again. Another thing that I want to talk to you guys about is being really careful or being really aware of like changes in your body not to make you anxious or overly sensitive if you have any aches and pains. But of course, if you're feeling anything, then say something, you know, put a pin in it and make sure that you take any long term or long existing ailments and stuff like that. You're bringing that to your doctor, that you're talking about it and you're not just laboring through it. But pay attention to your diet and your lifestyle. I am seeing a lot of major changes when it comes to diet and the word that's coming through is restriction. So um, in a way that's healthy, right? So this is where you may be needing to restrict yourself from certain foods that you were once eating and migrating over to foods that are your body actually craves and needs right now. The thing that's coming through is like, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people um, who, were, who were once on like strict, uh, maybe not strict diets, but like meal plans those same your body is exhausted of the eating the same type of food again and again let's say you do chicken rice and broccoli you can't continue to make chicken in like a million different ways um because we just want to switch up like i just see like a switch in like protein if you are a vegetarian or a vegan and you're eating like a lot of chickpeas or lentils you may be switching switching up your nutrients to include or you might be switching up your food to include different set of nutrients so you're not exhausting the same source um virgo is very earth energy right think about but it also connects to the diet lifestyle so think about if you are a farmer and you continue to plant blueberries or potatoes on your property and year after year after year you're constantly planting potatoes you're going to notice that the quality of those potatoes is going to diminish because the potatoes are extracting the same type of nutrients from the soil versus if you flip it and plant something new every year it gives the soil time to replenish itself and it allows your that whatever that your your harvest to reflect the different nutrients that are coming through same thing as what it is that you want to do with your body as well. So listen to the changes and listen to, I don't want to say the cravings. I'm not saying to honor every single craving, but pay attention to them because they're they're showing you and telling you this is something that your body needs. Also, definitely look at seasonal vegetables and fruits and grains. Start to explore different cultures and different opportunities. Your body will thank you. I promise you. Um, for those of you guys that are coasting right now or maybe not routine is going to help you a lot right making a little even a tiny change in your routine maybe working waking up later and um, pushing your workout from the morning into the late afternoon you'd be surprised how just switching up a tiny detail will impact your physical body and your mental body for the better a tiny tiny change we want to kind of switch things we want to vary things up um it, it'll just go, it'll go a long way. Okay, let's go ahead and look at some of these cards. I do want to tell you that this week the sun is going to be directly opposing Pluto. And I see this, right? When the sun is opposing Pluto, Pluto, especially now retrograde, this is where we are calling into question and calling out the powers that be, right? Um, this can feel like my thoughts have complete control over me. We have the Nine of Swords card here. Nine of Swords is the card of anxiety. And even though it is reversed, 
it's still present here. This could be anxiety that we push down, that we would suppress, that we refuse to look at. This is something that we don't want to do. Some of you guys, you want to look at your sleeping habits and your sleeping patterns. If you're someone who is anxious or depressed or stressed out, it's beautiful to have healthy sleeping, like, you know, getting your six to eight hours of rest every day. But make sure that you're not using sleep as a crutch, that you're not oversleeping or undersleeping. If your sleep has had any major changes, we want to look into that. I... I don't want to say this um, to trigger anyone, but like the word that's kind of coming through is like laziness um, and it's, I, but also like complacency. It's where there's a need to kind of shift. There's a need to kind of use your willpower um, and listen to your body and listen to your spirit and even ask your angels and your guides um, for a change for this pivot especially because the sun is directly opposing Pluto right now. Think about like a pimple that's sitting under the skin. This pimple um, is built, it doesn't matter where it came from, but it does matter, but like in, for the sake of this metaphor, it doesn't right now, right? We want to kind of like push up and extract sometimes or in, and then treat the pimple itself, right? Or sometimes you can leave it alone, but you want to treat it or whatever, but this is kind of what it is that I'm seeing here that for many of us, we are being called this week and the uh, like the two weeks to come to kind of extract and push up any type of, I don't say problems, but um, patterns, actually patterns, positive patterns, negative patterns, patterns that don't fully serve us forever. If this means that there is a person, there's some situations, right, that we cannot, we feel like we can't control. Let's say you're in a living environment where you know someone that you're living with is negative or giving you the evil eye or, you know, there's just tension in the household. There's some things that it's like, it does feel like you're kind of stuck in that situation. You can't really move out or move on right now. This may be where you do your best to kind of remove yourself as much as you can, whether it be you take space, whether that be you're listening to music or headphones, you're going for walk, walks, spending more time with your family and your friends, and even using this as a as a as the gas, right? The fuel to to continue to help you to propel yourself up and out. It's not saying like there, I do want to tell you that the astrology, the astrology charts and the tarot cards are not showing that these changes that we're being called to make within our lives or these pivots are going to be easy. They are meant to teach us a lot and it has a lot to do with your courage, your conviction, your own determination, your own will, you standing up for yourself, you speaking, and also looking at other people who are doing the same thing. We also have the star card here reversed and the page of swords reversed. This is showing me that there's someone here or a leading example that's showing up in your life that you can use as a guide to kind of show you how you could do things as well. And this thing may very, I don't wanna say trigger you, but this person or this thing may have something that you want or that you wish for or that you you know, you know want it for yourself. You may initially be triggered by this person or this thing and how it moves, how it operates, not realizing that the reason why it's triggering you is because it's reflecting to you your own will, something that you want and wish for yourself. Is there a way that you can mirror that? Is there a way that you can learn through the reflection, right? Or learn what they're what they're reflecting back to you and also incorporate new habits, new patterns that are teaching you how to speak up for yourself, you know, how to how to, you know, be empowered, things that you don't need to settle for, things that you don't um you know, you can say no, you know, say no to or yes to or no no response is a response as well. So those are things to look out for. This is again what the sun directly opposing Pluto retrograde is. Pluto represents our ability to control, our ability to kind of manipulate the situation, not in a negative way, but to match our will with our intention to kind of 
extract what it is that we want from the situation, there's a really strong moment of learning here and opportunity that we can that we can gain from if we're open to it. However, if you decide to be triggered and get into this defensive place, then you won't be able to learn. To support this even further, we also have the vertex point that is transiting through Gemini. Gemini does want to live and learn and explore and ask questions and is curious. We also have Mars transiting through Gemini as well in this kind of nasty square with, I'm looking at the charts right now, Mercury. And even, yeah, it's kind of far, but um, even Venus. Um, This is this battle that we feel like tension between um, in our communication, there may be messages or emails or disagreements or we can't see eye to eye. It feels a little tense. I do see that this is something to work through, but not if you are repeating past patterns where you give up, you give in, you extend your power. The universe, the astrology charts, the planets are teaching you how not to do that. If you do do that, you're gonna find yourself in the same situation that you, I don't wanna say you should be outgrowing, but the same situation that you have the opportunity to outgrow right now. Pluto, again, is trying to teach you how to empower yourself, especially through repeated past patterns that it's it's better, it's good to move forward, to move on from, if you're open to it. Um, sometimes to move on and to move through means to really see it, to go to the root and begin to extract, to pull it up so that that festering energy doesn't continue to just sit there and and get covered over, right? Um, The other thing that I'm looking at right now is the Two of Swords and the Honeymoon card, which is the Lover's card reversed. Let me show it to you up close. The Two of Swords and the Lover's card reversed. So For someone here, you may be feeling and experiencing like a blockage here. This feels like resistance. This feels like tension. This feels like other people or other energies that don't necessarily see things the way that you see them or want the same outcome as you. It's interesting because on August 2nd, and oh my God, time is flying. On August 2nd, that's a Friday, Venus is going to be in a direct square with Uranus. This is a planet of surprise, and Venus is a planet of relationships and desires harmony. This is where you mean you may need to kind of split up and separate from and give space to something that it just doesn't seem like it's gonna pan out. It doesn't seem like it's positive. Not gonna say positive, but it just doesn't seem like it's moving forward in the way that like works for everyone. It's like hitting your head, like hitting these blockages. Um It feels like disconnection, it feels like separation, it feels temporary, but it's there nonetheless. There will be an opportunity on the 4th, August 4th, with this new moon in Leo. Let me shuffle on that a little bit. Yeah, Nine of Cups, reverse though. Page of Wands, that right there is the message of opportunity for sure. And then the Page of Pentacles, I'm sorry, the Knight of Pentacles reversed as well. So this is the Leo new moon. There's going to be some, um, I'm going to have a whole video about that. So make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. We're going to be diving into that energy for sure. But um, there's, with the Leo new moon, there's going to be, this is fire energy right here, but there's going to be a surge, a spark of something that lights you up, right? It's an opportunity. Um, I don't think that this will come easy. I think that it, there's enough ambition and courage within you that you're gonna want to, it's gonna pique your interest. This could be a job, this could be an idea, this could be money, spending, a check. Um, I think that you, it feels, I don't wanna say that it comes with strings attached, but it doesn't feel like it's just like a gift. It feels like something you're gonna have to work for. Uh, Leo energy is connected to creativity, creation, children, joy. It feels like you're going to need to put in some elbow work in order to help to make this thing come to fruition. If I were you, I, it kind of concerns me that the high priestess is reversed and the chariot card here is upright. If I were you, I would use the full, I'm sorry, the new moon and Leo to, I'm very spiritual. I would go to my altar. I would go to my meditation space. I would ask for 
um, direction. I would ask for a vision. I would ask for creativity as far as what is the most abundant, creative, and nourishing future for me I would like that to be my experience. How? What can I do now today to get to begin to get me to there? Does that make sense? I would ask a question, something similar like that. Like, what can I do today? What can I begin? What can? What moves can I begin today or now? Like recent, like soon, to help me to get to to begin to build a future that is more nourishing, thriving, creative, and brings more joy and blessing and abundance, financial abundance and security into my life. Um, And that's gonna help you to get over this hurdle here, this little hoop, because Nine of Cups reversed is the card of like wish fulfilled and like happiness. Well, it's something that you want to see come to fruition that you, it's like ideal, but when it's reversed, it just feels like it's you you're not seeing it or you're not tapping into it it's like standing on a treasure chest and not and seeing that the dirt is turned over that something has been dug down there but not having the tools or the resources or even the energy to dig it up and this is where we want to ask our angels and our guides for yes that spark like we're no, we notice that there's something there like we know but we need to have the know-how the intelligence the plan the time to begin to uncover it um, for some of you guys, I'm definitely seeing a change in paths when it comes to your career, huge life-changing decisions, choices. This is where, number one, you've been intuitively feeling this for, for some time. I don't want to say rush it because there's no need to rush. This energy isn't going to just dissipate over t- overnight and you're going to miss an opportunity. We want to lean into it when it comes to our spiritual and our intuitive selves and, and say, I, spirit, angels, guides, ancestors, divine, I can sense that there's something looming around me, this life-changing choice, this decision, this career, this new cycle. Help me to see the best choice. Help me to capitalize on this or help me to create the opportunity that's going to be the best, the best for me. A lot of this is like, I want you guys to see this. This is turning a question, like something that you don't know into something that immediately empowers you that's how i work my magic right like you don't need to be powerless and anxiety you can have the anxiety it's normal for us to have the anxiety but we can always we always have the opportunity it's all about the words i'm virgo um like triple virgo here so it's all about the power of the words and the mind and what you how you can turn a problem a challenge into an opportunity for incredible major major growth um there is this message here this has nothing to do with the leo new moon but you're going to see it around the leo new moon hopefully you're applying it of relaxation this has a lot to do with the four of swords and the nine of swords reverse here think about how when we're tense when we're tight and the star card here reversed six of pentacles five of pentacles when our energy is tight we are no longer in harmony we're no longer relaxed we're no longer in flow because something is locking us up something is creating so much tension and tightness that energy cannot flow things cannot move everything gets stuck try to take in try to incorporate in the practices that are going to help you to ease up, to relax. That doesn't mean that you are, again, suppressing your anxiety or your tension. You may need to pour it out. You may need to articulate it. You may need to speak about it. But um, I also see giving it up to the universe, like really surrendering, because this issue of power and control can show up in our politics and our government. We do know that. We see this in in the news, in the world around us things that we can't control, things that we wish we had more control over, things that control us and really kind of determine our opportunity, our safety, all of those things, right? Um, But then there's a power, there's the powers that be and there's incredible, like what can't God do? Like what can't the divine do? What can't your angels and your guides do when you invite them in? So this is where you may be relinquishing your 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 control, your will over for this higher will. Ask for that. For some of you guys, you are not asking for enough. Six of pentacles, five of pentacles. You're asking for bare minimum. You're asking for, 
you, you, you may be in your prayers or in your intentions, you're asking for what's better for everyone else. And that comes from a nice place because you do selfishly, not that you're being selfish, but like you're hoping for the easier route so that you're you're almost praying and setting intention that if everyone else mouths are fed, then this is one less thing for me to do. Ask for more for yourself. You're, you're speaking abundance into everyone else but you. And at the end of the day, there's something here that you need. So um, give that up. Give that over to your angels and your guides and allow this energy to unblock itself because it doesn't feel harmonious. It doesn't feel as aligned as it could be. And to me, where I'm seeing this is something that we can control, which is our tension, our fear. It is normal and healthy to have fear, especially when facing the unknown, when these uncharted new territories, new cycles, new chapters. It's healthy. I get it. I'm with you. Just like I am someone who is really big on understanding the power of the mind, that can be a very positive thing and constructive thing and empower thing, empowering thing, but it could also can be our destruction, okay? So let me go ahead, actually. I will be shuffling from this deck, but I am feeling this right here. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Any additional messages for the collective? Oh my gosh. Um, for those of you guys that love these readings and need more of them, Bahati Love Notes is a subscription. Oh my God. Love that. Bahati Love Notes is a subscription service where I shuffle and pull for my little mini community there. It is a membership, once a, uh, a payment once a month. And... I don't say I pump readings into you because that sounds really weird, but they're there to help fill your cup um, throughout the weeks, the month, okay? And actually after this, I'm going to be shuffling for them as well. So there will be another fresh reading available. Oops, look at that. I'll link Bahati Love Notes down below. It's very similar to like a Patreon, only it's my Patreon. Like it's just on Bahati Life website, which is my my business for those of you that don't know. Also, um, there has been some new growth lately on the YouTube channel. Thank you guys for being here, being present, and joining this collective. If you are not subscribed, I do want to invite you. I've just been here for years, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. This card for sure. Oh, this card for sure, and this card. Okay, let's go ahead and see. I want to kind of pull these cards over because I saw them already. I don't know if you saw them too. The first card was Refuge, so interesting. And then we also have Retreat. So Enchanted Fern Grotto and the Spirit Guardian of Winter. This is show, the first thing that I wanna say that, the first thing I wanna say is something is clearly happening here around us, within us. Um, when I see the word Retreat and re Refuge, I don't see this as hiding away or like stillness like or inactivity i see this as movement if you these feel like action words right find or seek refuge seek retreat like go and retreat um if you are still if you are tight if you are fight or flight think about like when something makes you panic and you just freeze within yourself it can make you more vulnerable right there's moments where it's time for us to fly like to go away to move out of a situation for our own highest and greatest good i'm saying this not as a threat to us or i don't know why i would say it, humanity um because there's a lot of changes that are happening globally that are impacting all of us like all of humanity i'm saying this as this is not a time to lock up and to allow your fear to make you freeze this is a time to Go to the place of refuge, retreat into a place of safety and harness your internal power, 
call out for protection. This is also something that I've been seeing and like really sensing is it's I need to create um, more protection oils. I'll open them up by the end of this video, I promise. We gotta get them out because um, it's time for you to begin to protect yourself, right? You, especially if you're spiritually sensitive. Also social media, like I, I don't wanna beat a dead horse here, but we have to be so aware. Discernment is the word that keeps, has been showing up for over a year and a half now. We need to be aware of what we are collectively consuming, right? Because it gets inside. If it gets inside of your spirit, if it gets inside of your mind, if it gets inside of your emotions, it's not there to empower you. There's nothing about the news. There's nothing about what's going on in the world and that these powers, like these con these um, leaders, this leadership that has, most of them don't have good intention right they have they have agendas so if you and if the media is pumping this information out it is changing the narrative the thing that you need to be listening to like of course be aware but the thing that you need to be listening to is your your higher self your intuition you have to have a ritual a practice a routine that is constantly spiritually pouring into you regardless of your background regardless of your spiritual beliefs this is a mandatory if not you're gone like the rest of them so these refuge and this retreat words are action they're verbs they're things that it's for us to do right now not to run and hide but to again connect with our spiritual selves our intuitive selves for guidance and begin to pour into ourselves so that we can feel more in alignment and more empowered which is the next card that we have here dragon and power do you see how and i've, I've showed this during bahati love notes it also came up i believe maybe two weeks ago in one of her one of the readings that i did or maybe three weeks ago the woman is sleeping she's resting right she's laying down meanwhile the dragon is protecting her it's interesting that they chose the artist chose to represent power as a, a woman in rest and the dragon looking over over her not a whole battle not a whole fight not anything that's demonstrating our physical brute strength but what the strength that happens within us when we when we i don't want to say rest but when we go to the place of retreat and refuge so these things these energies are these words are speaking very very loud for what we can do this week you could be someone who could sleep on this energy. You could take the word refuge and take the word retreat and be like, oh, I'm just going to sleep. If you need rest with the four of swords here, because she is also laying down here. If you need rest, by all means, honey, you know when you sit with yourself and you reflect the high priestess here, when you reflect on your on your life and on your situation and you have an honest come to Jesus moment within yourself, you'll know the answer of what you need and, and what needs to happen next, right? So yeah, you'll, you'll have the answers. Next cards that we have here are wealth. Love that. The novice, right? So this is innocent. It, the card says innocence, beginner, ignorance, new skill without practice and unstable curiosity. But what this is showing me again is this newness, this new chapter, this fresh start, this um, pivot, crossroad type of energy, choices, decisions that we make that open the door for us to have a new outcome. And then we also have, wow, the king here, which represents, it's interesting because I wanted to originally say that this represents us being empowered, but I'm seeing this as leadership. I'm seeing this as um, politics, government, the kingdom, like actual, if you're in like, a, if you live in a place where there is a monarchy, um, keep your eyes on the news for this. Big, 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 big time. It doesn't necessarily need to be a masculine energy or a male. It's a person who is in authority or working towards authority. So we'll definitely see what's going on with that. I want to be doing a deeper dive. I did do a video about, let me write this down. I did do a video of current events um, in the world. I'm going to link that video to this video. If I don't write it down, I will forget. I'm going to link that video to, to this one so that you can watch it. 
it's meant to tell you exactly what you can expect from the world like in the future but also in a way that is always going to empower you that's always my that's always my way there's not one client of mine that doesn't get empowered right or one person who's on the internet that doesn't get empowered from from my readings you shouldn't be there should be no fear here speaking of which we have the armadillo spirit set healthy boundaries and this little guy has a shell <laughs> for good reason this has a lot to do with protection let me also write that down to open up the protection oils um we can get these out for you pretty quickly um yeah but those oils will be as soon as I'm done, I'm gonna do Bahati Love Notes and then I'm gonna make the, the protection oils. And then for real, I'm finishing up the rest of the orders and I'm going on maternity leave. I mean it, I mean it. <laughs> um, okay, Lizard Spirit, dream the world into being. Dream the world into being. This message right here is so beautiful, but I also see this as, I don't know why, I see this as like dog eat dog. This is about you being very aware of like, what lurks like what feeds on you i don't know that that sounds so cryptic and so weird but do know that like not everything or everyone has your best interests at heart from social media to people in our in our inner circles to our partners to the neighbors you know you just never know this is where you want to listen to your discernment someone who is doing well for themselves i just want to say may not you don't want to just trust everybody you don't want to give your power away if anything you want to exercise your own ability to make choices and decisions that are right for you instead of letting other people call the shots if you need to ask for more time with bigger choices and bigger decisions then ask for that if you don't know then you're allowed to say no and that opportunity will present itself in another form if it's meant for you. What is for you will not pass you. So just use a lot of discernment here, okay? The next card we have here, wow, the giraffe spirit. This card is about seeing the bigger picture, but when I see this, I see awareness and alertness. Your ability to see something coming from a mile away because your instincts are sharp. Your instincts are sharp, why? Because you were at your altar, you prayed, you set intention, you, you protect, you're spiritually protecting yourself. You know, you know danger before it, before it shows up. There's a lot of protection here that's, that's showing up. Okay, the last few cards here and then I gotta go is despair. This has a lot to do with the anxiety, mental anguish, or you could be picking up on collective consciousness. You might be, ha you might have peace, but you might be a little um, on edge, and that makes a lot of sense because it's it's sensitives. We're just on this planet together, so we can feel, we can sense um, the collective consciousness. Also, this is where it's important for you to also have boundaries and to continue to exercise protection because if you're absorbing the outside world your path will pivot and deviate or be distracted or delayed because you're constantly pouring into the mouths of others and listening to the needs of others instead of responding to the direction that spirit is giving you that spirit is telling you that you need to do this is your this is your instruction why aren't you following through the with the instruction that we gave you so even though it seems like it's coming from a good place, don't ever forget that our angels, our guides, our ancestors, the divine, the universe does get frustrated when we continue to allow delays and obstacles to prevent us from doing what we are meant to be doing for our own success, okay? Um, next card we have here is courage, exactly. Especially as soon as I see the word courage, I just want to get quiet. I just want to get quiet. I want to go in. I want to go into like empowerment mode. I want to go to my altar. I want to light one single candle. It doesn't even have to be one of mine's. One of mine. It could be a a regular um, tea light candle. But either way, just get set the intention for courage for yourself. Not that you're facing difficult things or fear or manifesting it, but that you have the ability to to face to face anything that you need to face to do what you need to do. Self love. Exactly. This is about pouring into your mouth first, spiritually, going and asking for direction. That's another way of practicing um, self-love is giving yourself the, giving yourself what you need to be spiritually poured into so you can do what you need to do next. 
<laughs> All right, guys. I love every single one of you. Bahati Love Notes. If you're subscribed, you are getting your reading next. We are going to be diving into, we're going to stay open, right? I think we're actually going to stay open and see what spirit has for us. So keep your eyes open and ears open for those notifications. For those of you guys that aren't subscribed to Bahati Love Notes, I do invite you to. It's $15 a month, but there's a coupon that takes off a chunk of that to make it manageable for everyone. I know that today's times are kind of wild. If you don't have a ritual or routine, that could be one of those things that I continue to pour into your practice and your routine. It's a big part of mine, so it doesn't take anything away from me. It actually adds a, another thing that I love to do in my days. So um, yeah, that's there for you. I'll link it down below. Everyone else, do know that Mercury is going to be retrograde again in Virgo, and we're just all invited to kind of go within, retreat, go to seek a place of refuge and protect yourself. And um, yeah, you'll be just fine. I'm sending you guys, ooh, excuse me, all of my love. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.